This is the new 2024 Tesla Model 3, and it's different. It may not look all that different, but it is. The Model 3 has been updated with some fairly significant changes, its first major revision since it came out almost seven years ago. Today, I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to review the new Model 3 and show you all of its quirks and features. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new Tesla Model 3 Highland except it's not actually called the Highland. Everybody's been calling it that, but when I borrowed this car from Tesla, they told me they don't call it the Highland. Externally, in any marketing materials, internally, it's not called the Highland. Tesla literally said to me in an email, we don't know where that came from. We don't know why people are calling it that. So it is not called the Model 3 Highland, officially or unofficially. That's just a name I guess Tesla fans have given it, which is certainly an interesting quirk. Now on to the rest. So you might be thinking, new Model 3, what exactly is different? Looks the same as the old one. Well, not up front. The front end design has been updated. You can see the front face has been changed. The headlights have been changed. It's a subtle update up here, but it is different than the old outgoing model and it looks more modern. And same deal in back. There's no radical redesign here, but it is different compared to the outgoing Model 3. You have a different taillight design, a different rear end design in general, some subtle tweaks, some changes to modernize the look of the car. And the badge is different. Tesla is now written across the rear end of the Model 3 as opposed to the big T Tesla badge right in the center. That's another difference for the new one. And the wheel design has changed too. Gone is the old Tesla Model 3 wheel, very distinctive, replaced instead by this one, which is new and apparently better for aerodynamics. In fact, Tesla says that all of these changes, while subtle, have combined to make this the most aerodynamic Tesla model of all time, to improve the drag coefficient, to make it even more slippery and aerodynamic. And two new paint colors coming to the new Model 3. There's Aero Gray, which apparently this is, looks a lot like the gray on other Model 3s, but I guess it's new, and also Stealth Red, which will be red and stealthy. And next up, we move inside the updated Model 3, where the interior has also been tweaked and revised, Tesla says, with the goal of improving the feel, the quality, and the premiumness, which is an actual word that Tesla used in an email to me explaining what they're changing. Although I make fun of them for that, the truth is they have done a good job of increasing the premium feel in this interior. That was always a complaint about the outgoing Model 3. It just didn't seem all that that nice inside, and now they've boosted things and made it better. Specifically, the dashboard. You have this new material here on the top, which looks and feels nice, and this line going around the entire top of the dashboard and continuing down to the door panel. It includes both aluminum trim, which looks good, and a mood lighting element, which also looks nice, and you can change the color of that to be whatever you see fit. But probably the biggest interior change in the new Model 3 comes in back. We have a new display screen back here, a new 8-inch display touchscreen that allows you as the rear passenger to select, configure, change all sorts of things. You have, for example, movies back here, an entertainment app section with Hulu and YouTube that you can select and then watch movies if you want. There's also video games back here. As you can see, several different titles you can play with a video game controller that comes with the car if you want to do that. And you have climate controls back here. You can adjust your air temperature, fan speed, and you even have heated rear seats now for added comfort in the updated Model 3. As for other changes to the new Model 3, one of them comes to the center screen. You still have a giant center screen that controls everything, like in basically all Tesla models, but it's apparently a little bit bigger than before, and Tesla says more responsive, which will obviously make life easier. And then there's the new sound system. Tesla says there is a new next generation premium sound system available in the latest Model 3 with 17 speakers, which is a lot of speakers, and it should enhance your sound quality in here. 
Also in this interior, you have dual wireless charging, one little charging pad on each side for two phones, and USB-C ports in these center cubbies for more charging of your devices. Another interesting thing, Tesla has eliminated the roll forward mode when the car is at idle. In the past, you could have the car roll forward to simulate a regular gas-powered car with a traditional automatic transmission. That's gone now, and when you're stopped at idle, even in drive, the car stops in place. But probably the biggest change up front to the new Model 3 is the lack of stalks coming off the steering column. For the new Model 3, the stalks for your windshield wipers, turn signals, your shifting into gear, all that stuff is gone and integrated into other places in the car. In the case of the turn signals, it's here on the steering wheel. You can see button for left, button for right. You push those and that's how you put on your turn signal. If you want to turn on your windshield wipers, you tap the windshield wiper button on the steering wheel. You can see it here, and then it pulls up your windshield wiper controls on the screen, and then you select what it is you want. Various different wiper speeds or just automatic wipers. If you want to go into gear and actually drive the car, you have two choices. No longer a stock, but instead get in the car, put your foot on the brake, and this display appears on the left side of the screen, allowing you to drag the car upwards to go forward, go into drive, or drive drag the car backwards to go into reverse, that's how you can select gears. Or if you want a more traditional gear selection situation, you have that on the ceiling. Near the rear view mirror, you can barely make out PRND around the hazard light button. That's an old school traditional way where you can shift gears if, for example, the screen breaks or you just prefer that to swiping your finger. And one other function the stocks used to have but no longer is turning on auto Autopilot. You used to press the stock down a couple times, autopilot would go on. Since it's gone, now you turn on autopilot with this button here. You press it on the steering wheel, just one press, or you can configure it to be two presses, but either way, it goes on and turns on autopilot. So these functions of the stocks have migrated elsewhere, and now the stocks are gone in an effort to increase minimalism in this interior. And one other big change for the new Model 3 is an intended improvement in noise reduction. Tesla tells me they've added acoustic glass. You can see this double pane glass and made other noise reduction and vibration enhancements to this car to try to make it quieter, more comfortable, more supple inside this interior. Now, Tesla tells me that the result is a 30% reduction in wind noise, a 20% reduction in road noise, a 30% improvement in noise isolation, and a 25% impact in overall noise reduction. I have no idea how they measure those percentages, but that's the goal to make the car feel more premium with the materials and with the sound and comfort while you're driving. So those are all the new changes to the updated Model 3. Before I get on to general Model 3 quirks and features, I want to talk over the two versions of this car that are available. There are two trim levels. There's a base model with rear wheel drive. It starts around $39,000. It has 272 miles of range and it does 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Or you can upgrade to the long range model. That's this one, dual motor, because it has all wheel drive. That starts around $47,500. And with the dual motor, range jumps to about 340 miles on a single charge, which is excellent. And acceleration drops 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Now, of course, the pricing numbers I'm quoting, that's before rebates that may be offered by your local or federal government depending on your situation, but those are the starting prices before those rebates. So those are the basics, the updates and changes for the new Model 3. And now let's move on to general Model 3 quirks and features, starting with getting inside your phone is a key. You do have a key card that comes with this car as a backup, but you don't need it. You got your Tesla app, you walk up to the car, your phone's in your pocket, you press on the door handle, it opens right up and you walk in. And the phone app has a lot of great benefits related to the car. You can find out where the car is on your phone app, you can schedule charging, you can mess with security, and you can even do various vehicle functions from the app, like lock or unlock the doors, drop the windows, or even honk the horn, all of which is a neat party tricks, but you can see how that stuff 
would be functional too. And once you're inside the Model 3, you start to notice a lot of interesting quirks and features. For one, despite the minimalist nature of this interior, the basic simplicity of this car's overall design, it actually has a lot of really fantastic high-tech features. Let's start with the camera system. You put on the turn signal, you press that button on the steering wheel, and it brings up a blind spot camera, which is right in your center screen, so you can see what's in your blind spot, making it easier to make a lane change. Now, one drawback about this car's minimalism is the lack of a screen directly ahead of the steering wheel, like where a gauge cluster would be. It'd be nice to see that blind spot camera in that screen, but Tesla doesn't offer one like some other brands do. So we have it here instead. It's still a fantastic feature you don't get on many cars. Another great feature about the camera system is that you can pull it up with just one tap of this button on the steering wheel. Press it, and then your cameras are up, which makes it easier to park or move around in tight spaces. A lot of cars have great camera systems, better than Tesla, but you got to go into various menus to access them. A simple tap on the steering wheel, and the cameras are up. That's great. And another great benefit of the camera system in this car is sentry mode. When you park this car, lock it, and walk away, you can arm sentry mode, where the cameras that show you where you're parking suddenly become security cameras that show you if someone comes up to the car and tries to break a window or break in, steal something, whatever, you suddenly have security cameras all on your car, which is cool. Possibly the only drawback of the camera system is that Tesla still doesn't have a top-down 360-degree camera in this car, which is absolutely wild. Basically, every other automaker is offering this now, makes it very easy to maneuver in tight spaces, easy to park between the lines or where you want. Unfortunately, Tesla still hasn't figured that one out, which is disappointing. But next, we move on to the other rather interesting quirk of this car, which is that a lot of the adjustments that you see in normal vehicles with switches and buttons are worked with the screen in this car. It's very interesting. Let's start with the mirrors. To adjust the mirrors, there's no switch on your door panel. Instead, you go into the controls menu, you select the mirrors, and then this little switch on your steering wheel changes the mirrors. You can go left, right, up, down. You can see the mirror is changing as I move the switch, and you can switch over to the other side mirror, and then the same switch will do the same thing, just over on the passenger side. It's the same deal with adjusting the steering wheel position. You go into the steering wheel settings menu in the center screen, and then once again, this switch will move the steering wheel up and down, backwards and forwards, so that you can position it exactly where you want. Rather than a typical switch on the steering wheel, it starts in the center screen. And it's more than just that. You want to turn on your headlights? Well, guess where you go? That would be into the screen where you can turn them on there. Now, thankfully, you can flash your brights, your high beams on the steering wheel, which is sometimes a nice feature to be able to have instant access to, but your typical headlights are in the screen. Amazingly, this screen control setup even includes your glove box. You want to open that, you got to go into the screen, into the control section, and then you press the part of the screen that opens up the glove box and then it opens. You don't even have a glove box handle in this car. It is that minimalists. Now, the drawback to all of this screen stuff is obviously it complicates some items, but it's a lot of stuff you don't use very frequently, like your headlights. You put them in auto and the car will kind of take care of the rest. You don't really need a button or a switch for them. However, the climate controls, it's a little bit of a different story. That you're using very frequently, and of course, it's integrated into the screen. Now, you have your basic controls down here. You can adjust the temperature pretty easily here, and you can turn on your heated seats or your front defroster, rear defroster, all with sort of a simple two-step process. But for more climate controls, you got to press the screen, it pulls up a larger menu, and then you have more work to do to figure out exactly what it is you want to use. It's not a huge disappointment or drawback, but it is a little harder to use than other automakers that have integrated their climate controls into the screen, where it just takes up a fixed portion of the screen at all times. Here, you got to at least do one tap and then a second tap to do basically anything. And a strange miss that this car 
has, when you turn on your heated seats in the climate control setting, you turn them on and then it doesn't display anywhere that they are on. Now, if you're sitting in the driver's seat, it's seats getting hot, you don't really need the car to tell you that it's on. But if your passenger leaves the seat on and then gets out of the car, it might just stay heating. Same deal in the back with no icon to let you know that it's on. Kind of a weird decision, a little disappointing. With that said, one absolutely fantastic feature of the climate controls is something that Tesla calls dog mode. The way this works is you can leave your dog in the car, even on a hot day, you're going shopping. Normally that would be a very bad thing. It gets hot inside the car and the dog could die. But if you put the car in dog mode, you can leave the dog inside, lock the doors, walk away, and the car will keep the interior temperature at a reasonable 70 some degrees Fahrenheit to make sure that the, <laughs> the dog stays comfortable even while you're outside the car doing something else. And then it even says on the screen while you're away, hey, the dog is comfortable, don't worry, it's nice and cool inside the car, just so people don't freak out when they see a dog in your car in a hot parking lot. It's a neat idea that Tesla came up with where you can lock the doors and still keep the climate control going for your dog's convenience. Now, while it may seem like too many controls are integrated into this screen, I did find one cool shortcut that makes life easier. If you're sitting in the driver's seat driving the car and you hold down the button on the left side of the steering wheel, it pulls up sort of a hidden menu that allows you to adjust various things from the steering wheel using the button. You can change the climate control temperature here, the fan speed, and a wide variety of different stuff. Pull up the camera, even open up the glove box, turn on the defroster, all for from this like quick button press on the steering wheel, which is a cool idea. Now, one big drawback in this car to going stockless and putting all of your controls in the screen is the windshield wiper situation. I mentioned to turn on the wipers, you press this button on the steering wheel, and then you can adjust the setting you want your wipers to be on. Most people will leave them on automatic, except the automatic wipers in this car just aren't all that good. It rains quite a bit before they actually start to turn on, so you're constantly having to make manual adjustments which isn't that easy when it's not just a simple steering column stock. You gotta press the wiper thing and then scroll over to the wipers you want and constantly change them up and down. It would work great if the auto wipers were better, but they're just not. And there's other cool stuff inside this infotainment system display beyond actual functional things, just some fun little quirks and features and Easter eggs that Tesla has hidden in here. For example, you can change the sound of the horn. This is the current horn sound. Take a listen. Okay, fine, but that is boring. You can choose from various different other horn sounds if you'd prefer, like for example, this indignant British man. Well, I never. Well, I never. Well, I never. Okay, so that's funny, and check this out. You can also change the color of the display car that is shown in the screen right here. Right now, the car is roughly the color of the one I'm sitting in, but you can adjust what color you want it to be, and you can even choose between metallic paint, solid paint, or matte paint if that's what you want to see. You can totally change whatever is displayed. Never really seen that level of configurability for a simple in-screen display car before. And of course, just like in back up front, Front, you can also play games. There are video games integrated into this infotainment screen. There's even a driving race car game where you use the actual steering wheel of the car to drive around. I've showed this in other Tesla videos before, the integrated video game system. Of course, you would only do that if the car is parked, you're sitting somewhere waiting for someone, you're bored. Well, you can play video games in your Model 3. And also, just like in back, there's even a theater setting where you can pull up various different apps you'd use to watch entertaining programs, including Netflix, Hulu, TikTok, and even YouTube. You can watch Doug DeMuro review a Tesla from the comfort of your Tesla if that's what you wish. Now, beyond all the technology in this car, there's still a few quirks and features worth noting and the rest of the stuff, even though it is tremendously minimalist in here. For one thing, I love the cover over the visor mirrors, which doesn't sound like something that you would 
form a relationship with, but it's really cool. You open it up and then it's magnetic, so you can split it in half, so you can have the visor mirror open, but the cover isn't getting in your way. And it's just a really neat design, the way they've created this, something that basically every other manufacturer should follow. Also worth pointing out, you have storage cubbies in the center console here. This center armrest lifts up for storage, and the furthest forward compartment also pushes open for storage. I also like how this compartment pushes open. There's a little tab that comes up over on the right side to push, and then the compartment next to it has a tab on the left side to push, so they don't collide, makes it easier to open them. By the way, that other compartment, the left side tab, that's your cup holders. You can open that up, and then you can store drinks in here, or keep everything closed to really maximize uh, the minimalism. And take a look around this interior, you will notice there are no climate vents in here. There are none at all. You don't see them in the traditional places on the dashboard. So how does air get into the interior? Climate, air conditioning, heat? The answer is there is a climate vent, but it's hidden under this panel on the dashboard. There's one long climate vent that goes all the way through. Now, when I first reviewed the Model 3 way back in 2017, I had the very first review, I was unsure whether this would be enough to actually get air in into the interior to make it warm or cool, but it works quite well, actually, and it's not visible, so you can keep the minimalism theme going without sticking climate vents on the dashboard. As for climbing out of the Model 3, you don't have a traditional door handle like you do in a lot of cars. Instead, there's a button located here on the door pole. You press that, and then it electronically pops the door open, and you can climb out. Just in case the electronics fail or the battery dies, there's also a backup solution, a physical mechanical door handle located here next to your power window switches. You can pull on that, open the door, and climb out as well without the electronic mechanism. But if you pull on that door, handle, a little warning comes on the screen and tells you the window trim may be damaged. I guess that's because when you get out the traditional way electronically, the window drops a little bit to let you out. But if you get out the mechanical way, it doesn't do that, which could over time cause damage to the trim. Kind of an interesting warning. Haven't seen that one before. As for the trunk, the cargo area, there's really nothing new here. You pop it open, it opens up electronically, which is a very nice luxury touch. And it's not a hatchback, despite its long sweeping rear window design, the Model 3 does have a traditional trunk like a traditional sedan, and that continues in the new one. But you open up the trunk and you can see it's quite large, actually. Despite this car's look with a kind of stubby rear end, it has a large and cavernous cargo compartment where you can stick whatever you want, and there's even more space. On the side, you can see a compartment here for more stuff. Same deal over on the other side and underneath the floor. Lift this up, and there's actually a fairly large additional compartment where you can put even more stuff. And just in case you've maximized all of this cargo space and you still want more, you can do it up front. The front compartment also opens. There's a small but relatively sizable front trunk up there where you can put even more stuff for even more storage capabilities. Finally, we move on to the overall design of this car. I mentioned what is new, but as for what is quirky, the answer is well, not much. The Model 3 is intended to be a very generic looking car, and it retains that look. There's nothing particularly quirky or weird or controversial about the way it looks. One interesting item, though, on the outside worth pointing out is this little piece on the fender. This is one of the few, like, style touches that the Model 3 has, and even that is actually functional. That's where the camera is mounted for that blind spot camera that I showed you earlier, the one that comes on when you put on the turn signal. That's where they mount the camera. So even though there's a little style element on the front fender, that too has a purpose. All right, driving the new Tesla Model 3, which I say in an exciting tone, but the thing I've learned from driving this car is it is not an exciting car at all. You know, it does zero to 60 quickly. It's a, it's, a, it's a fast car, but so is every electric car now. You know, there was a time when that was a really cool advantage that Tesla had over other vehicles. But now with the proliferation of electric cars, we've, we're all used to going zero to 60 in four seconds or three seconds uh, if we spend any time in any sort of higher trim electric car. And so that in itself does not make this car exciting. And other than that, the steering and handling is, is kind of numb. The, the steering is very quick. 
And I think that Tesla does that to disguise the fact that the handling is not particularly great. There's more body roll than you'd want. It's not particularly flat around corners. Uh, it's definitely not intended to be a sports car, nor is it one. I borrowed this car from Tesla for a week, and the thing that I've learned driving it around for that time is this is not a a car that you fall in love with. It is not a car that elicits an emotional response, but it is a truly fantastic car at doing the appliance thing, which is how I've why I've titled this video how I did. Commuting is a mundane task, and this car does the best job of maybe any car at making it easy. It is just a, a, a daily annoyance sitting in traffic on the 163, like I am right now, made easy because you have autopilot, you have a great charging network, you don't have to put an expensive gasoline. They created a car that just tackles all of those things and solves for it. The car is cheap to buy, it is cheap to own, factoring out depreciation, <laughs> I'd buy one used, uh, or at least one. It's cheap to run, it's cheap to operate, and it makes your life easier when you're driving it around. This is not a special car, but it is very, 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 very good at doing what it is supposed to do, which is just point A to point B without complaint, making life easier. There's no drawbacks except for the fact that it is mind-numbingly boring to look at, to drive, but honestly, even as a car enthusiast, I'm okay with that. I think it's totally fine to have a boring, anonymous, self-driving car to drive to work every day while you have cool stuff in your garage to take out on the weekends. It's been a while since I've been in a Model 3. Um, I get them as Ubers sometimes, <laughs> but I don't regularly drive one or use one. Uh, it does feel quieter in here. It does feel more luxurious and nicer, which is honestly good because truthfully, uh, that was the, probably the biggest drawback of the old car. It just didn't seem all that nice. This car does, and the ride feels a little bit softer. It just feels a little bit like a little bit nicer car. Not a full-on luxury car by any stretch of the imagination, nor would you expect one at this price point. Tesla really wants to make this car minimalist inside, and frankly, I like that. I think there's a lot of great things about that. Um, the drawback is some minimalist details are kind of annoying. I always felt taking away the heads-up display directly in front of the steering wheel uh, it would be nice to see what speed you're going, whether your headlights are on, what street you're approaching, that kind of thing directly ahead of you. Taking away the stocks makes things even a little bit harder, and I'm just not entirely thrilled with that, but I will say you do adapt fairly quickly, figuring out the turn signals, the headlights, the wipers, getting it into gear, all the stuff that used to be on the stocks. Tesla has this autopilot system that most Tesla owners believe is either the only autopilot system in the car industry, the only you know driver assist tech like this, or the best. I don't feel that way, and, and driving this car underscores and reminds me why I don't feel that way. Tesla Autopilot is fantastic, especially on the freeways, especially in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. It's one of the reasons that makes this car such a great commuter. You can turn on Autopilot and just not really do all that much. Autopilot is not great on regular surface streets. It gets confused by lane lines frequently and has trouble distinguishing where to go in anything other than fairly normal traditional driving on like regular lined roads that are kind of perfect. If the road does weird stuff, it, it kind of gets lost and can't really figure it out. The other drawback of Autopilot is that Tesla, for some reason, still does not have a capacitive touch steering wheel. In my Mercedes, if you're driving around using their driver assist tech, which functions about the same as Autopilot, you just have to have your hand on the steering wheel and the steering wheel will sense that your hand is there and then do what it's supposed to do and you never really have to do anything. Tesla, unfortunately, because they don't have a capacitive touch wheel, you actually have to jiggle the steering wheel every so often in order to remind Autopilot that you're still there and babysit it in a way that you don't with a car that has a really good capacitive touch steering wheel for their driver assist. I generally think this car is better than the old one. It has some real improvements over the outgoing Model 3. They're subtle, but they're there. Um, and more importantly, it's just a really good appliance commuter car. That's what it does best and it does that even better than before. And so that's the new 2024 Tesla Model 3. This isn't an exciting car, not a particularly fun or thrilling one, not a car that arouses your passions, but it is a great car for its intended purpose, making commuting as easy and simple and pain-free as possible. That's what it's for, and that's what it does fantastically. And and now it's time to give the updated Model 3 a Doug score. 
And the Doug score is here, 63 out of 100, which puts the new Model 3 here against rivals. The daily score is tremendous, 38 out of 50, which beats out everything else on this list. But the weekend score is comparatively low, mainly because, well, this car really isn't all that exciting. Here's the truth. The Tesla Model 3 is an appliance. And just like every other appliance, your dishwasher, your microwave, it's not really thrilling. It's a tool for a job. And this car is the best tool for the job of boring commuting in daily traffic. Traffic.